Yo everyone, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you kind of with like another commentary thing. So, I wanted to go over this article because Apple made an announcement about their used parts today for iPhone repairs. I have not read this at all. Um, I saw it on Twitter being talked about and kind of trending, so I figured I'd open up the Verge article and see what it's all about and give my thoughts because literally that's the industry I work in is primarily fixing phones and supporting them and setting them up and etc 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 so first of all we see the big text apple is changing a huge part of its self-repair process and will finally accept fixes with used genuine parts i feel like there is an asterisk that needs to be there because that doesn't sound like apple at all but let's keep reading Apple is finally making it easier for users to repair their iPhones with used parts. In an update on Thursday, the company announced that this fall, owners of select iPhone models will be able to repair their devices with used, genuine parts while retaining full functionality. First off, select iPhone models. So they're going to lock it to like the n past three generations probably. Okay, uh, and what they say with used genuine parts. Ooh, so they have a way to know now if... I, what this tells me right away is they have a way to know if the screen you are putting on your iPhone is from a phone that's in lost mode, if it's activation locked, or if it's iCloud locked. So parts devices are just going to be freaking worthless. Holy shit. Uh, when repairing a phone, Apple requires iPhone users to go through a process called parts pairing, which makes them match the serial number of their device to that of a new part sold by Apple. If a user replaced a part with an aftermarket or used component, the iPhone would display a pesky notification saying that Apple isn't able to verify the newly installed piece. In this case, in the case of Face ID and Touch ID sensors, the part might not work at all afterwards. So that is true. If you use the Apple Certified Repair Program, order your used parts from Apple, put the part on the phone, you then have to go through a process of pairing the battery or the front camera or um, the screen even. You have to go through the process of like pairing those different items to the phone again so you don't have a pesky little message a little annoying message on your lock screen that says hey this isn't the original screen that came with this phone or this isn't the original battery or this isn't the original front camera the thing that really sucks too is if you on i think it's 13 14 and 15 might even be the 12 if you replace the rear cameras you also lose panoramic photo and you lose a couple other small features within the camera app as well and i don't think there's even a way for Apple to actually fix that with their certified repair program. So you're just out of luck on some features of the camera. But, yeah, using an aftermarket part, you realistically don't have to go through that part pairing process. You can just live with the notification. It stays on your lock screen for seven days, and then it disappears. So, yes and no, you kind of, you want to go through it, especially if you're doing, like, ear speaker or front cameras, because then you lose your face ID if you don't do the pairing. Um, if you do just a screen, you do keep your face ID. But you do lose true tone unless a uh, technician knows how to transfer it over. Let's keep going. Because this is getting interesting. Um, this change should do away with these notifications for used parts. As Apple says, uh, the calibration for gen Oh my god. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, and this is why I don't edit. Um, <laughs> as Apple says, calibration for genuine Apple parts, new or used, will happen on device after the part is installed. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's a punch in the gut to Google, especially with the uh, Google Pixels. If you do a screen replacement on a Google Pixel and it has the underscreen fingerprint reader, you have to connect it to a computer with Google Chrome on it it then walks you through a process and has to reconfigure the fingerprint sensor. Now, I kind of understand probably why. It's to make sure that it runs correctly and it isn't, you know, 
less touchy or more touchy or something like that, you know, because maybe the glass has a slight tint to it, so it throws the camera off. Who knows? Usually the optical sensor needs to be calibrated in some form. It makes sense. But it's doing it right on the device, which is really cool. But I still, up here, the used genuine parts, yeah, it's it's going to be locked to, so let's say the iPhone got wet. I have two iPhone 14s in front of me is how I'm going to look at this. Identical iPhone 14 models. The one on the left, let's go with this. Uh, the one on the left, let's say these are the exact same models, even though they're not. Um, let's say this one got wet, but the screen is still good and it's still working totally fine. This one, however, uh, has a cracked screen. So I take the screen from this one, I clean up the connectors, just make sure there's no corrosion from liquid damage, and I throw it on this iPhone, configures itself, and it's completely fine. What happens, though? This is a what about ism or what if ism, I guess. What happens if, let's say, for some odd reason, six months from now, this iPhone on the left suddenly goes lost mode or something like that? Maybe I bought it from somebody on Facebook Marketplace or I got it in a or off a return pallet from like Amazon. Or I just bought it used in some form, like eBay. It suddenly goes lost mode. Does it suddenly lock up this phone even though it's six months after doing the repair? Like, what is... I, I, there's so many issues I have to this. Uh, let's see. The change will apply to displays, batteries, and cameras at launch. Apple says future iPhone releases will come with support for biometric sensors such as Face ID or Touch ID. So that's a little silly that they say that because your face ID will go out even if you replace the front ear speaker. Your face ID goes out if you... Wait, they're talking about touch ID. No iPhone has touch ID. Are they bringing it back? They could have just leaked that they're bringing back touch ID, which I really hope so. Um, but yeah, is it... I don't know. It's weird. I'll let Apple be Apple. Uh, okay. <laughs> I hate Apple. Uh, at the same time, Apple is also getting more serious about tracking used iPhone components. Here we go. The company announced that it will extend its activation lock feature. Oh, no. Uh, which is supposed to prevent thieves from using a device that's lost or stolen as a parts device. If a device under repair detects that a supported part was obtained from another device with activation or lost mode, calibration compa capabilities for that part will be restricted. So can you still use the phone and just have the annoying notification? Because, like, who cares, you know? Uh, yeah, that's, that's so stupid. Um, on the one hand, I get it. If it's in lost mode, lost or stolen, 100% agree. Uh, lock the part down. Make the entire device as useless as possible. Um, that's great. Uh, it reminds me of the time when my son had his Razer Phone 2 stolen because of just a series of unfortunate events, and I even knew the family that walked out of the damn bathroom with it. Uh, long story. But yeah, that my son's phone was never connected to Wi-Fi again, so I couldn't even wipe it. Like, what did that family do with the damn phone? I, it pissed me off so much. But anyway, um, lost or stolen makes sense. Activation lock does not. Because I'll talk about my experience with Geauga Phone Repair. A lot of what we did with that company was buy pallets of phones that were return items or warranty devices from Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Apple directly, the U.S. government even. And a lot of the times they would still be activation locked because people didn't understand how to reset the devices correctly before they sent them in for warranty or before they returned them. So we would end up with them, and then we'd just have a bunch of activation-locked phones that we couldn't get around because iCloud is borderline Fort Knox with just once-in-a-while workarounds. 
um, those activation lock phones we'd have to sell as part devices. So if we can't even sell them like that, they're freaking worthless. Depending on if the part at least works. So well, let's read on. If you do end up repairing your iPhone with a used part, the device will store that information in the Parts and Services History section of the Settings app on iOS. That's pretty cool. So you can just open it up and know. That's awesome. Uh, Apple doesn't specify which iPhone models will be supported this fall, but it, the company told TechCrunch it will be the iPhone 15 and later. So they didn't specify it during the announcement, but then told a news outlet later. I bet they can do it with older phones, and they probably will. Um, anyway, with the latest expansion to our repair program, we're excited to be adding even more choice and convenience for our customers while helping to extend the life of our products and their parts. Yes and no. This is slightly stupid and slightly smart, mostly because of the activation locked BS. Um, even though Apple hasn't extended its approval to aftermarket iPhone parts. The change is a huge repair, huge for repair shops and DIYers who have to deal with paying a higher premium for new iPhone parts. No, it's not. Verge is just out here licking the freaking... I'm going to stop that sentence. Uh, <laughs> licking the tip. Anyway, no, it's not a win for repair shops. It's not a win for DIYers because a lot of the times it is cheaper to buy another broken phone to fix your phone, especially if you have the newest of the new. So let's go to Mobile Centrics. And since they mentioned iPhone 15, that's where we'll do this comparison. Let's do a 15 Pro. So a 15 Pro, currently the best display you can buy is generally X07, at least with the used market. 212 plus about 10 bucks shipping, so 225 bucks. Not bad. iPhone 15 Pro. Let's see an iCloud locked one, for example. Uh, eBay might be cracking down. They are. eBay's cracking down. That makes sense. So, yeah, it's still going to be far more expensive to buy. A used device in that sense but yeah even still it's I don't know just Apple let me use X07 screens don't be a dick about it we have a way around it anyway like all repair shops if they choose to and they use mobile centric parts especially can get around the annoying warning on the screen anyway so this is worthless it, it's this isn't this is worthless it's not anything Apple I don't know it it's a win and a loss I'm happy that lost and stolen phones are just becoming even more worthless but there's not enough answers here yet I I really want a lost and stolen iPhone I want a completely clean iPhone and a lost and stolen iPhone when this launches I really want both of them side by side and I want to take the lost and stolen screen off and put it on the one that's normal and completely fine and see if it completely screws the phone can you not use it at all is it just an annoying pop-up and you can still use the phone there's not enough answers and those answers will come later when obviously this whole thing launches but right now I don't know it's or even this even impacts companies like I used to work for uh, another company I used to work for they would set up devices for major companies like JC Penney and Disney and stuff like that. I remember working on iPhones for the US government. I don't know how much more I can say, but we would get devices sent back to us that were not properly reset and the iPhones would be completely worthless at that point because they would be activation locked. It, so they ended up in our parts bins and we would use those parts to fix the other iPhones. This was back when like the iPhone X was brand new though. So this was quite a few years ago. But even still, that would make it so much harder. So, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Is it a win? I don't know. Is it? Is it? I don't know.